there's a new bipartisan measure in Congress to declassify UFO documents uh, throughout the government. This is huge, and this bill is backed up by uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who, it's worth noting, is a personal friend of Representative Tim Burchett, according to Tim Burchett. You would think they would be political enemies, and they surely are, but in real life, in private life, they are friends. So I wonder if that has, you know, colored anything uh, in Chuck Schumer's mind and helped him along in this process. Um, anyway, let's get to the story. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, share in social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, here's what they have to say on News Nation, and then we'll go to the New York Times article. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he will introduce new legislation to declassify government records related to UFOs and UAPs. That is a big deal, and this just came down within the last couple of minutes. And it comes as things are really starting to take shape for the UFO hearings on Capitol Hill, with House leadership just today confirming that they are tentatively scheduled for the end of this month. The hearings will be happening in just a couple of weeks. But those in charge of the hearings have been tight-lipped about the witnesses that they plan to call, even telling us that the Pentagon has already begun running in interference on the possible whistleblowers. More on that in just a moment. Uh, the announcement about the timing of the hearings comes after our reports here on News Nation, straight from whistleblowers who came forward with new evidence and allegations that the government knows more than it's telling us uh, about alien vehicles and aircraft, UFOs known in government lingo as unidentified aerial phenomena. Those whistleblowers include Air Force veteran and former military intelligence officer David Grush. These are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will. Non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. Those claims getting serious traction. Here is Oversight Chair uh, James Comer confirming the hearings to News Nation just today. Yeah, we're going to try to get that in this month. I will tell you this, I've been surprised at the number of questions I've received on that on that hearing. So I think there's a lot of interest. There's certainly a lot of curiosity out there about that issue. And with what we're seeing with the majority of Americans right now, there's absolutely no trust or confidence in the government right now. So I think that has the potential to be a pretty substantive subcommittee hearing. And one of the leaders of those hearings will be Representative Tim Burchett uh, of Tennessee, who we had on the show this week. I really tried to press him on who he has lined up to go before the subcommittee to give evidence of what he alleges is a government cover-up of UFO evidence. I know you don't want to give away much. Can you give us just a little hint of what to expect with the hearings? I mean, are, do you have multiple people well, lined okay. up at this yeah, point? Yeah, I mean, I'm, we're, yeah, it's going to be, I would hope, a half a dozen people, we're going to have some people that uh, I would hope from the scientific community, we're going to hopefully have some pilots, we're going to have to have some whistleblowers, um, some others. But, you know, as soon as I announce that the Pentagon puts a squeeze on them, which we've already, they've already started with some of our alleged witnesses. So we're going to keep it pretty close to the cuff. And then when we release it, it'll be public record to everybody because I'm not going to play the secret game. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was interesting, and it's uh, always uh, worth, uh, you know, finding out about the Pentagon shenanigans and how they are, um, you know, attempting to uh, put a cog in the wheels or the, you know, uh, uh, throw a monkey wrench into the gears, um, rather, uh, of this uh, hearing. So, I guess that I would be surprised if they didn't. But it is alarming that they are even trying to interfere with congressional actions. Uh, but again, that shouldn't be a surprise if this is orchestrated by the control group. If, uh, you know, if that is who is trying to interfere with these witnesses, then, you know, their reach is vast and broad and they don't really have a whole lot of <clears throat> moral qualms like, uh, you know, you know, we would we would hope the government would have. Uh, not that they do, but, you know, that'd be nice. Okay, let's just go to the New York Times article. There's probably more information in the New York Times article. I am reading this fresh. I haven't read this before because I want to give you my fresh reaction. 
the New York Times bipartisan measure aims to force release of UFO records. What? Legislation backed by Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, would create a review board to declassify documents related to UAP across the government. What? Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, the Majority Leader, is pushing legislation to create a commission with broad authority to declassify government documents about UFOs in extraterrestrial matters in an attempt to force the government to share all that it knows about unidentified phenomena. Now, I have to point out that this article was written by our friend Julian Barnes, who wrote the well-known debunking piece not long ago. So has he changed his tune? Is, uh, you know, what's going on there? Is even the debunker forced to cover this? Is he gritting his teeth while he's writing it? Or will he try to pepper in little debunkings as we go? We will find out. The measure offers the possibility of pushing back against the conspiracy theories that surround discussions of UFOs and fears that the government is hiding critical information from the public. The legislation which Mr. Schumer will introduce as a, an amendment to the annual defense policy bill has bipartisan support, including that of Senator Mike Rounds, a Republican of South Dakota, and Senator Marco Rubio, Republican of Florida, who has championed legislation that has forced the government to release a series of reports on UAP. Uh, support in the House is also likely. On Wednesday, the chamber included a narrower measure in its version of the annual defense bill that would push the Pentagon to release documents about unidentified aerial phenomena. While the government has agreed not to call mysterious sightings UFOs, various branches and agencies disagree on whether to refer to aerial phenomena or anomalous phenomena. Yeah, originally UAP was aerial, and then they switched it to anomalous. I guess some people are still calling it aerial. A uh, divided Congress, a defense bill. The House voted, okay, that's not pertinent. Uh, the Senate measure sets a 300-day deadline for government agencies to organize their records on UAP and provide them to the review board. President Biden would appoint the nine-person review board subject to Senate approval. The Senate staff members say the intent is to select a group of people who would push for disclosure while protecting sensitive intelligence collection methods. Okay, well, I guess, you know, who they pick to be on that board is crucial. So, you know, even now... Uh, I'm sure the you know powers that be are positioning themselves to get some dirt on these guys if they don't have it already and uh, otherwise uh, coerce them. I and mean, we'll see, but um, yeah, that's, that's where my mind goes. Interest in UFOs has always been high, but it has grown even more since a collection of videos showing a UAP recorded by military censors was made public and naval avi aviators described hard to explain events while on training missions. Some of the videos released by the Pentagon have been explained as optical illusions or drones, of course. Uh, but yeah, and, and it's uh, also, I should point out that even when they explain these away as drones or optical illusions, that doesn't mean they are. <laughs> <laughs> that is how they debunk them, uh, you know, famously calling the, uh, you know, uh, Green Pyramid uh, over the, the battleships a bouquet effect of the lens when uh, they actually had to go against their chief scientist uh, who was analyzing uh, the footage, Travis Taylor, to say that. They went with the McWest explanation of the Flying Pyramid. Um, not that of their actual scientist who was presumably paid to analyze this footage. Well, worth pointing out that they, uh, you know, went with the debunking narrative, which, you know, again, is, is not um, what a, the normal process of their task force, the UAP task force, would have resulted in because the normal process of their task force would have been to go through their scientists and have them analyze the footage and give a, you know, a classification anomalous or not to Bray and Moultrie. And that is what Travis Taylor did. And he said it was anomalous. And they said, nope, sorry, we're not going to say it was anomalous. We're going to say it was a uh, bouquet effect. Um, in other reports, they call them drones. And 
uh, Lou Elizondo has said that is a convenient shorthand uh, when they are uh, making these uh, reports initially, when the, the military guys are making these reports, they do call them unmanned ve vehicles. That's not because they are or because they believe that, but it is just less eyebrow raising and it, you know, it may be a way to circumvent FOIA or something. Um, but that is kind of what they have been doing. Uh, I don't know if they're still doing it with the, the with the new laws in place, but uh, for the last few years, that is, is what they had been doing, according to Lou Elizondo, is to call these things unmanned vehicles. Yeah, just like I said, not, not to raise eyebrows. And, um, you know, Bray and Moultrie would have known that, presumably, but they, they went with the, the drones and the lens effects. It is hard to know how many unreleased documents exist in government archives. Yeah. Intelligence agencies have said repeatedly uh, that they have released the material they have, their freedom of information offices are constantly deluged with requests for materials on UFOs, only to be met with responses that the archives have been released. Still more recent work, particularly by the Pentagon, has not been made public, and the reticence of some government agencies to produce records has frustrated both Democratic and Republican lawmakers, Mr. Schumer's staff members said. And I missed a paragraph. It is hard to know how many unreleased documents exist. Uh, intelligence agencies have said repeatedly that they have released the material that they have. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, that was my laugh for the day. <laughs> that was a real laugh. Uh, their freedom of information offices are constantly deluged with requests for material only to be met with responses that the archives have been released. Yes, I'm sure they have released everything they have. Mm hmm. Yeah. The little Zondo completely wrong about all that footage that they're sitting on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I believe them. I believe them. For example, various Pentagon task forces have conducted extensive studies on videos taken by naval aviators and other military personnel that have remained secret. Some work on the videos has been released, including a recent NASA meeting. In some cases, officials believe disclosures could reveal the capability of classified optics and sensors. But in cases in which no formal conclusions has been reached, uh, I think I mean, yeah, a conclusion, ha officials have been reluctant to share information on their deliberations or theories. It is the reluctance to share all that is known about the incidents that are not completely understood that has fueled endless speculation on social media. Okay, it was getting a little long-winded, so I skimmed a little bit. Here's a relevant portion. Uh, under Mr. Schumer's legislation, the president could decide to delay material the commission has chosen to release based on national security concerns. So yeah, uh, they can use this national security concern language to, you know, just hold back anything they want to. I mean, what is a national security concern, right? Is it mass hysteria? Is it the public finding out the truth about the reality of the world or the cosmos in which we inhabit? Is that a national security concern? Is it finding out all the crimes that the control group and related uh, entities have you know, committed over the years in pursuance of this cover-up? Is that a national security concern? So yeah, you can see where I'm going with that. Um, you know, so even if this gets passed and even if it works, they can still hold whatever they want back. Mr. Biden, unlike former President Barack Obama, has not directly addressed the issue of unidentified phenomena. But Mr. Biden did order two unknown objects in a Chinese spy balloon to be shot from the sky. Actually, there were three objects. One of them was in Canada. But I guess he didn't order that, although he must have Somebody must have authorized the use of U.S. jets to shoot it down. Uh, maybe that was NORAD, and they were the ones that did it. Afterward, the president said that he would not apologize for shooting down the spy balloon and that the U.S. would continue to adapt his approach to dealing with unknown objects. So, uh, yeah, we still don't know about those other three objects. That first object was a spy balloon. I, you know, I don't know what the other three objects were. I, I, I don't know if they were UFOs. I just think it's very interesting that although they released uh, videos and photos of the first object, they did not do so for those other three objects. And uh, they have withheld information on that. At first, they said 
they were discontinuing the hunt for the debris from those objects. And then later we found that they were actually continuing to try to re re retrieve material from those objects. Well, you know, all of which, you know, leads to very conspiratorial, you know, thinking, right? So if they were simply balloons, why not just uh, tell us they were balloons? I mean, you know, we would buy it, right? We were, you know, the, the first one was a balloon, you know. Uh, so I, I'm really curious about those other, those balloons, right? So anyway, uh, you know, I, I don't mind if they're simply balloons. I... I've always found it weird that we're able to shoot down genuine UFOs, but there's there's a lot of evidence that we have indeed shot down real UFOs. But let's look at that second to last paragraph again. Uh, those assertions have been challenged by some former officials who believe the government is not divulging all that it knows. The legislation would likely force material, uh, force more details of the government's study of unknown materials to be released but it also gives the federal government the power to claim any crash spaceships in private or corporate hands, however unlikely that such things exist. I mean, that's a little, that's Julian Barnes' little editorial. It's very unlikely that these things exist. Uh, all this is for nothing, Julian. <laughs> uh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, so this would, uh, allow the federal government to reclaim this stuff from Lockheed Martin and whoever else has it. And I think that is a very interesting detail in this proposed legislation. So, you know, I don't know what that means exactly. Could it mean that it could all get swept under the rug? Uh, you know, if they find out about it, they could just seize it and uh, store it away in some deep underground military base somewhere. It's very possible. On the other hand, I think that a lot of this stuff is in the hands of private industry precisely to hide it away. Uh, you know, they, they put it there so it can't be foiled. It, it can be hidden. There's no paper trail because it's in private hands, not government hands. However, possibly the spotlight would have grown too intense. And, um, you know, they would feel the, feel the need to put it somewhere even more secure and not just hidden by, uh, you know, a lack of a paper trail, but, you know, deep underground somewhere, some secure facility. facility. So uh, that is an interesting wrinkle in this proposed legislation. There's a lot of wiggle room here. They can, uh, you know, hold stuff back because of national security, or they can just seize stuff. So, and, and, and if all this does happen, it won't, you know, really go into effect until you know six months a year um which you know again will give them plenty of time and also you know it's worth pointing out that david grush first testified to congress behind closed doors in both chambers of congress uh you know two years ago and so they've been sitting on this information for two years it wasn't until david grush went public that they have been compelled to um, actually take action so I really wonder what would have happened if David Grush had not gone public. Uh, so I salute you, sir, and I salute Ross Coulthard and News Nation for uh, bringing this story to us. Uh, actually getting Julian Barnes, you know, the debunker, to actually write a semi-favorable article uh, in the New York Times about this issue uh, it's on uh, other news stations. I just covered, you know, uh, a Fox segment uh, yesterday. Uh, so it's good that they are continuing that after Tucker Carlson left. Uh, he was really the um, news anchor that made it possible for other news anchors to talk about. So whether you like him or not, he was huge in terms of getting this information to the public which probably directly contributed to um, yeah, making this palatable for, for the news to talk about, leading to uh, Congress being able to take this seriously without looking stupid. And now we have Chuck Schumer on the case, uh, leading the charge in the Senate. He has been very silent on all of this since this has been going on. When Marco Rubio and Kirsten Gillibrand were openly talking about this stuff and trying to get something done, um, even legislation passed, 
he had been very quiet about all of this. So many people, including myself, were wondering where he would come out on this. Um, I was surprised to learn in an interview with Tim Burchett that they were buddies. I, yeah, I wouldn't have put those two together. So that is really interesting. And I, I wonder if some of Tim's views are rubbing off on Chuck or if Chuck has always been a proponent of UFO disclosure. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this new legislation? Are you excited about it? I am cautiously excited about it. I mean, how can you not that the government is actually taking action on UFOs, trying to get access to honest to God UFO material, not dismissing it, being uh, very serious about this. Um, so it's hard not to be a little optimistic about it. it. At least, if nothing else, if they never show a UFO to the public, if they never reveal any of this stuff to the public, at least this is raising the public's awareness of this reality. So you can say that at least they are doing that, that they are getting this information out there. They're getting more and more people on board the UFO reality, which could, even if the government doesn't disclose, uh, it could lead people to engage in CE5, which, you know, as much as I detest Stephen Greer uh, for spreading disinformation, lying to people and you know, um, you know, denying the experiences that countless people have had with abductions, uh, saying it didn't happen, you're, you're full of BS, it was all the military. Um, you know, as much as I think that's despicable that he, he would do that and try to brainwash many people into thinking there are no alien abductions. Uh, I really salute him for popularizing human-initiated contact with the phenomenon. We can't trust the government to reveal this stuff, but we could initiate our own contact. I've done that a few times with my MUFON group and with some friends, and we've had, it's worked every time. So um, you, you can totally do this, but you need to do it safely. Uh, you, you can have bad experiences. Try to bring somebody with you that, you know, is sensitive to energies and is, a, is more of a woo-woo sort of person. You know, some of you won't like that, and I totally get it. I was there a few years ago, but the woo-woo is real, and it's a big part of this. Even Gary, Nol even Gary Nolan says, when you look into UFOs, the woo-woo is right around the corner. It's all baked in together. It's all part of one big thing, the greater phenomenon, as I call it. So, um, so yeah, so CE5 is key, and I salute Stephen Greer for popularizing human-initiated contact, even developed the app for it. So, uh, so yeah, so this whole thing that is going on right now with legislation is raising public's awareness, and it could get more people involved in initiating their own contacts with the phenomenon. And if, if this keeps on going and this, uh, you know, disseminates enough to the public and raises enough of the public awareness where enough people are initiating contact, peaceful contact, a positive contact with the phenomenon. I think that, well, I mean, I've always thought that the, the phenomenon is going to reveal itself when it wants to reveal itself, and it reveals itself to individuals all the time. Um, but as far as open disclosure goes, I don't think we're going to get that until the beings want us to disclose, when they want to disclose. So, I think that will happen when the public consciousness gets to a certain point and when enough people are already uh, engaged in their own relationships with the phenomenon. That's just my two cents, guys. Uh, so I think this is a good thing, whether it accomplishes Jack or not. Yeah, I'm Jack. I should know, right? <laughs> so... Anyway, bad jokes aside, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. And if you've appreciated this video or gotten something out of it, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you guys there. And if you could share this video on social media, that would be super helpful. There are plenty of other videos for you to check out on the channel. And I will see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.